Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. According to the CDC, about 16 million adults in the U.S. have COPD. Now, that's short for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and it means you have difficulty breathing. Unfortunately, there is no cure, and patients often end up requiring oxygen just to stay alive. But there are some treatment options, and one of which is called lung volume reduction. I'm not a doctor, but I'm not sure that sounds good. Well, you're going to hear all about it, right? <laughs> Today. Mayo Clinic doctors are now able to perform the procedure in a minimally invasive way without a major surgical procedure. Joining us in studio to tell us about this technique and the results are pulmonologists, that's lung specialists, Perfect. Dr. Eric Adele of Mayo Clinic Rochester, and from the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, Dr. Sebastian fernandez Busi. Welcome both of you to the program. Thank you. Thank Gentlemen, you welcome. It, a great topic. Uh, some, uh, did they wear those kind of ties in Kansas? Is they wear these t- <laughs> kind of ties all over, including Minnesota. <laughs> you look I good in a seen, bolo tie. Yeah, I, I've <laughs> got to get one of those. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Tell us what it is, Dr. Adele. Well, it's a condition primarily the result of excessive smoking exposure, predominantly those that have been smoking cigarettes, but we also see it in people who may have been using fires in their home to cook, but in the United States, predominantly it's due to smoking. What happens is you get injury, inflammation of the airway, which leads to thickening, excess secretions, and in many patients, you actually see destruction of the lung architecture, which we call emphysema. So the end result, as you said, is difficulty breathing. It's obstruction of the small airway so people have a hard time getting air out. So really the main risk factor is smoking. Absolutely. Uh, But you see other patients who have COPD, correct? We do. Uh, You can see patients who've had chronic inflammatory conditions like asthma who end up with irreversible obstruction. That fits into more of the bronchitis or the bronchial portion of COPD rather than injury to the lung tissue, which is emphysema. The but bronchial they're all the, portion of the tubes the that tubes, lead that's to right. the lung. Okay. Yeah. And the complications, why is this such a bad problem, other than the fact that they have difficulty breathing? I think that's it. There, there are lots of productivity, recurrent hospitalizations because of it. The, uh, the quality of life is significantly impaired as a result of their COPD. Lung cancer, more common in these people, of course? Yes. And what about uh, lung infections, pneumonia? Uh, Yes, they have a higher propensity for uh, infections because they can't clear their secretions as readily and they're more inefficient. Is this um, lung volume reduction, is that the only way to treat COPD or what what else can you do? The standard management for COPD is to enhance or to reduce the inflammation of the airway, so inhaled anti-inflammatories like corticosteroids and inhaled bronchodilators. So in people with severe emphysema, There are two categories of bronchodilators that people use that effectively result in opening up the airway as best they can. If the patients then are needing oxygen, oxygen is actually the only medication that's been shown to extend survival. The rest is all about reducing hospitalizations and improving quality of life. So Dr. fernandez Busi, tell me a little bit, it doesn't sound good, but explain lung volume reduction. Yeah. So as Dr. Edel was, was mentioning, when, when you have a patient that are, is on full medical treatment with all the inhalers, with oxygen supplementation, and on, on, and on pulmonary rehabilitation, and still uh, that patient experiences severe shortness of breath and poor quality of life because of that, now we have this option of uh, endoscopic lung volume reduction. We knew that actually lung volume reduction, surgical lung volume reduction, used to improve the uh, breathing of these patients in a subgroup of patients uh, with emphysema. But now we have this minimally invasive option that can achieve the same results, uh, meaning lung volume reduction uh, for these patients. And, and Yes. So, so tell me, uh, why, if the, the lungs don't work very well anyway, would you want to make them smaller? Yes, very good. So as Dr. Adel was mentioning, when you have damage of the lung architecture, that part of the lung becomes ineffective. It's an ineffective lung and becomes a, a, a bigger. Actually, that ineffective lung is a long lung that compresses 
the healthier part of the lung. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, the, not the uh, lung is not affected all the same. So there are parts of the lung that are worse and parts of the lung that are better. Well, in some patients, yes. So in some patients, uh, there is more damage in certain areas. And actually, those are the patients that benefit more from this treatment. So if we are able to reduce that ineffective lung, the size of that ineffective part of the lung, uh, if we are able to deflate that, that will give more space for the healthier part of the, the lung to expand and, fun and function, and the patient will experience uh, better breathing and, and, of course, better quality of life. Can you tell by looking which is the bad part and which is the good part? You can. You can. You, uh, the, the CAT scan or the uh, radiograph called a computerized tomography will show the various densities within the lung. Can I add to what uh, Dr. You Bushi sure just said? Can. You know, I'm a very simple Kansas boy. So when I think about the mechanics of the lung, it's basically they fill up with air because the lung wants to collapse the smaller uh, bronchi, the breathing tubes. So the diaphragms become flattened, and you can actually see this on a chest x-ray. Even an orthopedic surgeon could see this on a chest x-ray. <laughs> Their chest is hyperinflated. And when you see patients with emphysema, they breathe with their accessory muscles. So what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of gas in their thorax, in their chest. Their diaphragm assumes more effective positioning, and now the diaphragm can help them breathe. So it is allowing better lung to expand, but more importantly, allowing a flattened diaphragm to come up and participate again in the work of breathing. And the advantage of this is that you can do it through a scope as opposed to having to open the chest and, and remove part of the lung. And that's correct. So, so we do it under a bronchoscopy, a flexible bronchoscopy. A bronchoscopy is a flexible tube that has a, a camera at the tip. A patient is under anesthesia. And we go down with this flexible tube through the mouth into the lungs. And we go to the area that we already have pre-selected as, as the most uh, damaged area. And we placed uh, tiny valves. And these are one-way valves that uh, do not allow the air to get into that part of the lung when we breathe in. But when we breathe out, we, it does allow the air to get out of that part of the lung. So with time, that part of ineffective lung will get deflated. It will shrink, allowing more space for the healthier lung. Wow, fabulous. And is there hospitalization required? And can, can people breathe better right away? Yes, so um, the, we would li we like to keep the patient in the hospital for about three days. Uh, and then patient can go home. And usually they experience an, an improvement in their breathing over time. It's not, it's not right away. Uh, uh, so usually it's over the first few weeks. Have you been doing this long enough that you can tell us about the results and how successful this, this procedure is? Yeah, so um, I want to clarify something. So not all patients who have emphysema are candidate for this treatment. So patients who meet the requirements and that we uh, go ahead and place these valves, about 80% of them will achieve significant benefit on their daily activities. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a very promising treatment. 80% success rate. That's you can't amazing. argue with that. That's yeah. right. Endoscopic lung volume reduction. It's a new minimally invasive procedure to help patients with severe emphysema. The early results obviously encouraging, and it has some real advantages. Shorter hospital stay and fewer side effects. Our thanks to lung specialist Dr. Sebastian Fernandez-Busi from the Mayo Clinic in Florida. Welcome to Rochester, by the way. Thank you. And from... Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, Dr. Eric Adele. Thanks, gentlemen, for being with us. Thanks Thank for you having very us. Much. Thank you.